What's going on ladies and gentlemen, hopefully you're having a great day. In today's video, we're going to be learning about object-oriented programming in Roblox. Before we get too deep into the video, I do have a Patreon if you guys would like to support me, because this video does help you guys out. There's a link down below in the description of my Patreon, go check it out. We also have a Discord if you guys would like to ask questions or help other people, link down below in the description to that as well. And of course, if this video does help you guys out or you would like to see more Roblox development videos, make sure you guys hit that like button, also hit the subscribe button, and turn those post notifications on as well. Anyway, let's get into it. Okay, so object-oriented programming is amazing. It helps in so many ways and especially in keeping your code organized especially when you're coding larger projects now before we get too deep into understanding what oop which is object oriented programming you're going to be hearing me say oop a lot throughout this video before actually understanding what it is i would like to show you an example of how i use it if you don't care to see that then go ahead and skip a little bit further ahead but i think this might actually excite you a little bit so that you can understand where you can use this at so right here is a module script one of the functions we have is npc.new this function is taking in a location then we're creating a brand new meta table and then we're also cloning the npc now the npc is a model within my replicated storage and then we're going to clone that now with the new template we're actually setting a custom property right here this custom property is what i'm calling spawn location and we're setting that to the location we're creating another custom property and we're setting that of the npc template to clone the brand new clone that we just got then to spawn in the actual npc which we want we are going to set the primary c frame to the coordinates or the location that we want to and then we will also parent the clone to the workspace if you don't parent the clone to the workspace, then you're not actually going to see the model in your game. And then finally, we are going to return the NPC template right here. Now, in a server script, I actually have a couple of different things. One, we have a location list. This is where all of the NPCs are going to spawn at. So I actually have two locations. Then we have a for loop. Now what the for loop is going to do, it's going to loop over every single location in the location list, and it's going to get a location. Then we're going to create a variable NPC, and we're actually going to set that to NPCs.new, and we're giving it a location. So remember, we're going to call this function. We're going to give it a location. It's going to run through all this code, and then it's going to return the NPC template. Then once we actually get the NPC, we're going to call a function of the NPC, which is the move function right here. So we're going to call that. Now, the reason that we're using task.spawn, you might not be too familiar with that, but the reason that we're actually using that is because the wait. We don't want the wait to stall out the script entirely, so we have to spawn a brand new task. I'm not going to get too in depth of what task.spawn is because that's unrelated. So now what does the move function do? First, what it's going to do is it's going to split a string. And the string that's actually going to split is self dot spawn location. Now, self actually refers to the NPC object itself. So NPC template would be the example of what the actual self is. So we're going to use the custom property spawn location, which we set right down here to location, and we're going to split the string provided. Then we're going to set X, Y, and Z to all the split. We're also going to make a while loop, and then we're going to wait five seconds. We're going to generate a random X and Z, and then we're going to say self dot NPC. Remember, another custom property, which we set right down here to clone we're going to get the clones humanoid and then we're going to call a function on it called move to and provide it a vector new with the random x the y and the random z so now let's start the game and we can see actually what happens so we spawn in the npcs are spawned in right here and then wait a couple seconds and they actually move around so every five seconds these guys are going to constantly move to different locations because of how we actually have the move function set up now we can actually mass scale this and all we have to do to increase the amount of npcs we literally just have to add more locations to it and let's say if we wanted to make a simulator out of this which was actually my original plan we could also add another property to it like npc dot points equals 10 and we could say that every single time a player talks to an npc we could check the points property and then we can give that amount of points to the player there are so many things that you can do with this and we can easily expand this system now that we have the base system by just adding more properties or changing certain things and that's why object oriented programming is so amazing because now this system's been created it's so easy to expand and add brand new things to it okay so now let's actually get into explaining and talking about object oriented programming i'm going to leave a link down below in the description to a really nice write-up article about object-oriented programming. It's really useful and object-oriented programming is a really complex thing, especially for new people. I'd really recommend that you go ahead and give that a read because it definitely might give you another better understanding of learning this. I'll also be citing that as my resource and sort of using some of its explanation in this video as well, because I think they did an amazing job. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I am going to go into server script service and I'm going to insert a brand new module script. So I'm going to recreate this sort of NPC system that I have because 
because I believe it's the easiest to explain and also make an actual usage case out of. So we're going to go ahead and name this script NPC. You guys can name whatever you want. We're going to set the table variable to NPC, and we're also going to return NPC as well. Now, real quick, I want to explain what an object is, or at least give you an example of what an object is currently in Roblox. So imagine if we wanted to say local int value, which is very common when initializing leaderboard stats or player stats in general. We're going to do local int value equals instance dot new, and then we're going to say int value. Now, right here is an object. Int value is an object, and we're creating a brand new int value. Then what we're going to do is we're going to take the int value and we're going to change whatever property that we want to of it. So the common property is name, and we could set that to name. We can then take the int value again and change its value to 10. And there's other properties of it that we can also change as well. So let's actually create a function for creating our own object. So we're going to do function npc dot no. And then we could take whatever parameter we want. Let's just take a name parameter, then create the function. So let's now initialize a brand new table and just say objects table and then just initialize a blank table. So now we can assign some properties to our table and we can say object table dot whatever we want to. We can say object table dot name equals name. We can say object table dot height equals 10 object table dot speed equals five and object table dot color equals maybe brick color dot black. Now, of course, we're creating the object, so we're going to want to return it. And then we can go ahead and return objects table. Now, I'm also going to go ahead and grab my NPC information right here so that we can actually show this in game. And I'm also going to grab a few things from right here just so that we can actually show the NPCs in game. All I'm doing is grabbing the clone so that we can actually clone the literal NPC itself. I'm going to also grab a location right here so that we can spawn in the NPC. And then I'm also going to set the parent as well. You don't have to worry about too much of this. I just want to be able to show you guys the NPC in game. And now so that we can actually test this and really see if this is all working, let's just say NPC spawned. And then let's go ahead and create another script and let's just say NPC spawner. And then I'm going to go ahead and require that module script, which is the NPC module script right here. So we're going to go ahead and require that. Let's make an adjustment to this though, because we want it to be equal to NPC because that's our script. That's our new script. And then let's say local NPC equals NPC dot new. And then let's just give it a name monster. And then let's go ahead and start our game. And as we can see right there, NPC spawn. And then once we get in game, we can actually see that the NPC has spawned. Now, obviously there's two NPCs here, but this one is the specific one which has spawned. And as we can see, it's not moving or anything. So that is definitely the one that we spawned. Now let's go ahead and check it out a little bit. Let's go ahead and print NPC.name. And let's also print NPC.color and then start the game again. And then as we can see, the name of it is monster and the color of it is black. So we can definitely see all the properties that we set there. That's really nice. Now we're of course going to want to add some more functions to the NPC itself so we can actually get it to do stuff besides just spawn in and sit there. Okay. So remember NPC right here is actually a table. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually use a meta method on this table and it's going to be underscore underscore index. And then we're going to actually set that to itself. Now, when we actually initialize this, we're actually going to want to change the objects table variable. So we're then going to use a function called set meta table. Now we're going to create a brand new meta table and we're going to set that table's meta table to NPC. So this might be a little bit confusing, but remember how we had objects tables set to just another blank table? Well, we're basically doing the same thing. We can actually write it another way. So we can say set table objects table, and we're going to set the meta table of the objects table to NPC. This is sort of the longer version of writing it. You could literally just write it like this and initialize that to the variable, but it might be a little bit more confusing. With the objects table, we're just creating a brand new blank table. And then with the set meta table method, we're actually setting the objects table, the blank table to the end NPCs table. So we're giving the objects table a meta table, which is NPC. So let's go ahead and create a new function called NPC. And now this time, instead of using a period, we're actually going to be using the semicolons. And let's name this function rename. And let's take in new name as the argument. So the reason that I created this function is because now think about this, right? NPC is a blank table. And what we're doing right here with this period is we are setting the new function to this meta table. Then what we're doing with the semicolon is we're doing the exact same thing. We are setting this function inside of the NPC's meta table. So think about it just like the object dot name. We're setting the name property to the objects table. We're setting the height property to the objects table. We're setting the speed and the color all to this objects table. It's the exact same thing as setting new to the NPC meta table. This was confusing for me at first, but once I realized this exact thing, that NPC dot new is the exact same thing as doing objects table dot name that cleared it up for me completely and really helped me fully understand exactly 
exactly what we're doing. Now, the reason that we actually use semicolons instead of a period is because when you use semicolons, when you actually call this function, you're passing in the object itself without having to pass it through the parameters right here. So let's look at this server script right here. Now, when we actually call the function, what we're going to do is we're going to say NPC rename, and then we're going to provide it a name within here. So we're going to say new name. Now, when we call this function, it's going to pass through the NPC object right here. Literally, we are calling this function on the NPC object. You can think about it that way. So we're using the NPC and we're calling the function rename. And what we're passing directly through there is the NPC object, which we're calling the function with. And then we're also passing through some data with the parameters. So now how we actually use this is we say self dot name equals new name. And this will take self, which is the NPC object we're passing through here. And it'll set its name property to the brand new name that we give it. Let's go ahead and remove the color. This time we're going to print out the name. We're going to call the rename function, which will change the NPC's name. And then let's go ahead and print the NPC dot name once again. Now, before we can run this, let's actually change this variable name, the NPC object, so that we don't get it mixed up with this. So let's go ahead and redo this. So let's go ahead and rename everything properly. Okay. So now we have the NPC object, which is the variable, which is getting a brand new NPC. We're going to first print out its name. Then we're going to rename it. And then we're going to print out the name again. So let's go ahead and start it. Oh, I also realized another mistake that I made. It's actually only two underscores instead of three. It might be a little confusing, but use two underscores, underscore, underscore index. That's how you properly do it. So we can start our game and we can now see NPC spawn. Then the first name is monster. And then we adjust the name to new name. So that's one function that an NPC can now do. Let's say we want to make a new function called NPC and we want to make it teleport to somewhere. We're going to make a parameter, which is location. Now, what we're actually going to want to do is we are going to want to go down to where we actually created that. And when we clone it, we're going to want to set objects table dot clone equals clone. So now we're actually assigning the NPC clone, the direct NPC, which we've cloned. And we're going to set that as a clone property. So we're going to say self dot clone to get the clone. And then we're going to use a function and set primary C frame part. And then we will set the location and we'll put the location directly into here. Okay. So we can go back to the NPC spawner and we can say wait five. And then we can call NPC object teleport. And then we can throw in any coordinates that we want to. So we can look at, we can use this part for a test example. We can take this position. We can go to NPC spawner and then we can spawn it in right here. Now, actually, I don't think this is going to exactly work. So we're probably going to have to adjust this to X, Y, and Z. And then we'll do X, Y, and Z. And that should work. So then let's also print out teleported and let's set this weight to 15. Okay. And then let's go ahead and start our game. Now we can see that the function's all called properly. And now we just got to wait a couple of seconds and we should be able to actually see it teleport directly to here. So remember that NPC is over there. And eventually after a few seconds, it will teleport over to here. So we can see it has now teleported and we can also see that it output teleport here as well. So let's talk about how we could actually expand this system. Now what this NPC variable is actually set to is it goes inside of the NPCs folder and then it just selects an NPC from within inside of here, which is called dummy. Imagine if we took that out of here and we just set it to the NPCs folder and let's just rename this to NPCs. Now, when we create a brand new NPC object, we can ask what we want it to be named. We can also say NPC model. So we can also say what NPC model do we want? And let's just say what speed do we want? So now we can set the name, we can set the speed, and then let's do a for loop. And then let's loop through the NPCs folder and let's get the children. Okay. So now we're going to say if NPC dot name equals NPC model, then do something. Now let's also define local clone outside of here. And then we could say clone equals NPC clone. So we're doing the exact same thing basically is right here. And then we're going to set the clone property of the objects table to this clone that we just got from right here. And then we can set the C frame and we can set the parent and do all that good stuff. So what this is going to do is it's going to go through our NPCs folder. It's going to find the specific NPC that we're looking for, and then it's going to clone it. And then it's going to assign it to the table. So now we just made the NPCs actually so much easier to expand because now we can actually specify what NPC model we want. And we can now use a ton of different NPCs if we choose to. You can also think about in this system, 
system as well. This system was super basic, but I probably would have actually taken in the NPC model as well. But this allows me to just use one specific NPC and then give it a specific location for where we want to spawn it at. And when I call this, I actually go through a list of every single location where I want an NPC to spawn at. So using object-oriented programming allows you to make massive systems, but also split them into little different sections and functions that you can use. Like I said, it's super, super useful when you're making systems, which you want to be able to expand in the future, and you want to be able to use it for a couple of different things. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, if this video did help you guys out, make sure you smash the like button. If you guys are new around here and you guys want to see some more Roblox scripting videos, make sure you hit the subscribe button and turn those post notifications on. I also have a Patreon if you guys would like to support me, link down below to that in the description. We also have a public Discord if you guys need some more help, want to ask your questions, or you want to help other people, link down below in the description of that as well. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comment section down below. Anyway, I hope that you guys have a great day, and I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.